Good morning, everyone, and a very warm welcome to all of you. Core HRIR is back with its 14th Learning Weekend Webinar Series, and uh, coincidentally, it's 14th of April today. So uh, we continue with our legacy of learning and knowledge sharing. I am Jyoti Sharma, your host for the day, and the thought leader for today is Mr. Vivek Trivedi, who will be sharing his insights on the topic, interview best practices and increase exponential application selection ratio. Before we start with the webinar, we would like to share a little bit about the Core HRIR group for the ease of those who are joining us for the very first time. Core HRIR group was formed in the year January 2017 and comprises of HR professionals across the world with over 1,000 plus HR leaders, CHROs from Fortune 500 companies. Our vision is to provide a platform to all the HR professionals to collaborate, network, learn, share their knowledge and experience and expertise with each other, and to keep abreast on all upcoming HR trends and practices. Since our very inception, we have come up with various initiatives, the first one being the WhatsApp interactive platform where we have numerous discussions knowledge sharing happening on a day-to-day -day basis our new all the new initiatives ideas industry practices are discussed in order to help one and all uh, the next initiative that we have is our learning weekend webinar series and we are delighted to say that this is our 14th learning weekend webinar uh, other than that, we also have the Chai Buddy series, wherein all HR professionals meet face to face, gain insights from the leaders and experts. Uh, another initiative is uh, the job board, wherein we share career opportunities specifically to provide all HR professionals a platform to explore various opportunities across the world within the HR functions uh, in India and overseas. The next initiative is the Shining HR Award. Uh, which is basically to felicitate the outstanding and deserving HR professionals. Um, other than that, you know, we are proud to say that we had our first uh, Bangalore chapter event, and we are further looking at uh, having similar events in Pune as well as Delhi. We're also tying up with various um, uh, associations to create more of learning opportunities for all of our audiences. Uh, moving ahead uh, with our webinar for today, uh, the topic I'm very the topic for today is interview best practices and increase exponential application selection ratio. Our thought leader for today is Mr. Vivek Trivedi, who is the head talent acquisition with JSW Global Business Solutions. He is a university topper and management graduate with 15 plus years of experience and has been helping people to identify their key strengths and interviewing and assessing candidates from small organizations to coaching on 500 companies, from campus selection to CXO level selections. He's a certified sourcing professional. He's a certified recruitment analyst, certified PPA practice practitioner by Thomas International. He is Lean Canvas Methodology certified from Indian Institute of Management, Bangalore. And he's also a certified lead ISO auditor from ASCD UK. He's uh, currently working as talent acquisition head. Prior to JSW, he was head talent acquisition with GMR Shared Services. He's also worked with head EMPI, e EMPI South with Team Lease Services Limited. And he was also an entrepreneur co-founder with 360 degree HR consulting services, Pune. Uh, he is the India's youngest ISO certified recruitment, uh, which is the India's uh, youngest ISO certified recruitment firm. Vivek is extremely active on LinkedIn. He's an open networker with 30,000 plus followers. He's a blogger, um, and he's also working on various non-profit uh, initiatives like the Morning Medical, uh, which is an inspirational initiative to share knowledge and learning with one and all. Uh, there's another initiative which is Job Seekers Help. Uh, currently, one of his book, Interview Mantra Eight Magic Tricks, is under, has been published and it's been mentored by Dr. Ramkrishnan Pillai. He has received many awards during his scholastic and professional career, uh, like the award from Jawaharlal Nehru Science Congress, award from Government of UP. All India Radio Award and World HRD Congress. He's been associated and has been an active speaker with JK University Jaipur with ISMS Mumbai Symbiosis Pune as guest lecturer and a keynote speaker. Uh, a little bit 
about me. I am Jyoti Sharma, your host for the day. I've been an HR professional with 12 plus years of total experience. I'm currently working with British High Commission and have previously worked with organizations like British Council, Neon Hewitt, and IBM. So I can't really wait to move on now for the topic for today. And uh, Vivek, over to you. Uh, Vivek will be sharing his in insights on the topic. And there's a lot more in store during uh, the webinar, which Vivek will just be sharing with you. Thank you so much, Jyoti. I think uh, it's, a, it's a nice, uh, you know, morning, Sunday morning today. And let me start with uh, thanking everyone to spare out our time and to sharing the inputs uh, you know, and taking out the time for a learning session today. So I think, uh, you know, 14th of April is something which is, uh, which is very, very important uh, and very significant also. So that's what we also wanted to inbuild that 14 as a very special day and a special number for you. So that's what 14th April, 14th seminar. And now you will have a 14 point, uh, you know, discussion as well related to interview best practices. And uh, just to share with the input, uh, like, you know, I mean, this is going to be a very unique discussion uh, today, uh, you know, unique in the sense because, you know, we will be doing more than what we will be doing here. Uh, you know, so we are actually having some prizes here also as a most, most engaged, uh, you know, uh, hangout uh, participant. Just give me a sec to understand uh, from Jyoti that whether it is all audible. Yes, Vivek, it is audible and clear. And clear also, yes. right? Yeah, thank you so much. So, yeah, so just to uh, share you the inputs that like, you know, we are uh, making this uh, discussion as a very engaging discussion and we will be taking certain inputs from you throughout our discussion and we will be, uh, you know, announcing some awards also. So the first thing is that like, you know, the first award for the category is uh, like, you know, who will be the most engaged uh, participant uh, throughout the session. And Jyoti and Veer from Core HRIA team, they are going to uh, evaluate, uh, uh, you know, the name throughout the discussion. So that is something like, you know, which, uh, which uh, I wanted to share with you because, you know, all of you are sacrificing a lot. You know, it's, uh, it's very easy for a person to go out on a Sunday and do something with a family. It's very easy for a person to go out on a Sunday and do like, you know, uh, something else uh, to pursue the hobby or whatever. But if you guys are investing a time here, so definitely we would like to reciprocate with a thanks and just a matter of gesture here. And that's how we will be having various things coming up for you. And uh, to start that is uh, the first thing is the most engaged, uh, you know, participant name. And, uh, you know, so just to take it uh, uh, back uh, to the core HRIR and the discussion forward is uh, primarily, I mean, I'm very much thankful to core HRIR team to giving me this opportunity to share uh, the bit uh, information about uh, the interview best practices, because what happened most of the forums, they always mention that, uh, that how to give interviews, but like, you know, nobody mentioned that how to take interviews. And this actually creates a very important role for an interviewer. And if we will come to know that what are the uh, do's and don'ts, what are the good, uh, good practice, best practice and all, uh, definitely this is going to be a value addition for all of us. And that's how we chose this topic. And that's how like, you know, we actually invited uh, the uh, participant invitation and thanks to almost 300 plus people who has registered for this webinar and shared their input so we did a small research also we shared uh, we got to know that the people who are who joined here are from the different fraternities they are from uh, they are not only from hr but they are still like uh, you know uh, from the other fraternities also like uh, few are the students few are uh, the entrepreneur few are the recruiter few are the hr few are the finance professional uh, the it professionals also and the most important part is that like, you know, if you are, uh, you know, uh, not working at this moment of time, but they also want to evaluate. So we want to give a value addition to all of them. And uh, that's how uh, our whole content of this webinar is uh, not connected to any particular sector, any particular location, any particular level. But this is uh, primarily towards all uh, like, uh, you know, uh, towards all uh, functions, level and uh, even like, you know, the sector also. So just to give you the bit uh, information about myself, uh, you know, so I started my career from pharmaceutical company. Then I, I joined FMCG company and uh, I was area manager for a location called Chhattisgarh. And then afterwards I moved on uh, to Pune where I, I learned the ABC about recruitment uh, from one recruitment firm uh, uh, in Pune. And then I started my own company for five years. I was an entrepreneur. 
next to that, I got a chance to work for a company like GameLease, and uh, that is South India EMPI operations. Uh, next to that, uh, you know, got a chance to work for a company like GMR, where I was heading a talent acquisition team, and we were doing the almost uh, thousand plus recruitment in a year. And uh, uh, then I recently got associated with JSW as a uh, global business solution as a uh, team uh, head for talent acquisition for global business solution, which is shared service. And in this whole journey, I got almost uh, 30,000 people got interviewed and 10,000 selections. So this is not a, this is not like, like a, you know, one is to three ratio, but this is something like, uh, you know, just for, an, uh, I mean, these many people when got interviewed, uh, this actually gave me the various idea that like, you know, there is a space where we can see that how we can do something better, either in terms of like, you know, interview uh, as an interviewer also, as well as as a candidate also. So as a candidate, there is a thing has been inculcated and that's what, uh, you know, I put all the things in a book, which is getting published uh, by the name called Interview Mantra, Eight Magic Tricks, uh, you know, and uh, parallelly, I was thinking that I should give some input to the interviewer also. And that's what uh, this whole, uh, you know, discussion all about. And uh, I wanted, uh, like, you know, to give the inputs uh, to the people who are uh, who are the hiring manager, that what are the best practices which they can follow, right? So with this note, I want all of you to just, uh, like, you know, start putting the inputs on a chat box that how many of you are from HR, those who are from HR recruitment or uh, talent acquisition field, they please write on your chat box, uh, you know, that you are from HR. If you are not from HR, just write that, like, you know, which function it belongs to. Either you belongs to finance or you belongs to IT or you belongs to BFSI banking financial, anywhere, just write those, uh, you know, your domain on a chat window. Because Jyoti and Veer is uh, going to take a complete uh, inputs on that, uh, you know, again, in terms of those who are the highly engaged person. So let me start uh, an attempt here, uh, like, you know, with a, uh, with a small story, uh, which uh, particulars to myself only, uh, you know, uh, which shows that how much important the interviewer are. Generally, we always say that, like, you know, the candidates' uh, importance are there and all that. But, uh, you know, in the meantime, we need to see that how much, uh, you know, importance uh, about the interview as well. So let me take you back uh, to my first uh, interview. And, uh, you know, I mean, it was surprised to the fact that I, uh, I actually uh, went for an interview first time. And, uh, you know, but I missed out to carry my resume. So, so then... You know, I mean, I was actually been accompanied by one of my my uh, batchmate, and whereas uh, you know that person was carrying the resume, and what we did is that we actually took a Xerox of the resume, and uh, we went to the interview panel, and uh, you know the interview panel was none other than vice president of that company. Um, I mean, you know, so uh, he asked us one question. I mean, like you know, so he interviewed the both of us, and then he said that like uh, you know, uh, what is the reason if you can if you can just like you know share that both of your resume looks like then we told uh, like you know whether we can get a job or not but still you know we want to tell you the truth is uh, like uh, you know i mean we missed out to take the resume and uh, uh, finally what we did is that we did, we did we just did a xerox and that's what like you know we were running short of time and that's what we want to put forward to this resume to you and uh, believe me guys or not like you know we got a job both of us uh, joined uh, the same company and uh, that was a CFL Pharmaceutical Limited. And the history got turned around uh, last month of March uh, 2019 when I was uh, doing one guest lecture in one uh, you know, management institute in Bandra, Mumbai. I, I met actually the same person who took my interview uh, the first time. So his name is uh, Mr. Rullas Karkhanis uh, and he's a director in, uh, in the same management institute. And when I was explaining all the things like, you know, uh, about the best practices of interview, we he mentioned that like one thing which is common in uh, you and me is uh, you know we both started from pharmaceutical and i said that like you know i was in cfl he also said that i was also in cfl kind of and then we were able to identify each other and then we got to know that the person who has given me the chance uh, like you know during my first interview uh, is uh, is uh, like uh, you know so important for me that today i took some 30000 interviews after that so now i think you guys can understand that the most important thing is that like you know as an interviewer it's a very high responsibility uh, on you 
uh, to take care of the candidate and you never know that like you know i mean you can actually give somebody a real uh, you know the reason to become a rock star for your company so with this uh, we can move on to our sector uh, section one so jyoti if you can just take us to the slide sure we will Please wait. We can go ahead. Sure. Thank you. So the next one. Next one. Yeah. So first of all, let me tell you the importance of this 14 points and 14th April uh, 14th webinar. So that's what like you know to want to put that information or want to have the very live session today. That's what we want to put it as 14 point agenda. This 14 point is actually divided it into three uh, sub sections. So the first one is something which is connecting to the subject. The second one is something which is related to the best practices. And uh, would like to share with you that these best practices which we observed. This is a thoroughly researched, uh, uh, you know, content which we shared, which we got it in fact from the all domains put together, which includes of the the expertise from big fours also, as well as there are like you know the content which we receive uh, from primary and secondary sources uh, across domain. So whether it is a manufacturing automobile or it is related to IT, BFSI, startups, and all, all things put together, we actually inculcated these best practices, and that's how this uh, part two is uh, being presented to you. We are we are very very particular on the time uh, part, and that's what you can see. The hard stop are there. The reason is that like you know, it's a very vast uh, subject. It's an ocean, you know, interview and interviewers and all that, the best practices and all. So I actually want to touch upon on the major important things. Uh, probably like you know, in a detailed descriptive manner. Uh, you know, anyone wants, they can connect with me through LinkedIn or through other social media also. Uh, you know, in case if you want any particular things in detail. But uh, just to start the things, we wanted to tell that, like you know, at least we can have a basics in place so that we can, uh, uh, you know, take the things forward, and then accordingly we can set up the ground. So uh, the next slide, please. Yeah. So this is just understanding the subject, uh, like you know, which is uh, started with the two quotes that we need to understand that uh, you know i mean as an interviewer the most most important thing you need to understand is that what position you are trying to fill you know whether the skill set is important or you you are already having something which is there for example if you are hiring for an sap uh, you know uh, expert right and uh, you know becoming an sap is a mandatory but again if you are looking for a communication skills along with an sap expert probably you may have some of the issues in that but if you are having an in-house capability, like you know, where you can actually uh, give a communication training, then probably SAP expert can give a most important uh, part of it. So that's how you need to understand really that what position you are trying to fill. And then the next part is like you know, which is a quote by by Rachel Kaur, founder of RA Development, uh, saying that like you know, what competencies are needed in particular. So whether it is uh, skills which is required or knowledge and behavior, again. How much uh, you know behavioral uh, uh, part you are giving an importance versus skills part? So this goes uh, different to the different positions. The next slide. So sharing you the the genesis of interview that uh, how the gen interview has been started and uh, like you know I I request all of you to even keep the notes and keep uh, like you know. Uh, the thinking cap on because we will be keep on asking the questions uh, throughout the discussion and that's how we will be going to have our first winner for the session today uh, who who can be called it as a most engaged uh, you know hangout person or a core hr or webinar person and kind of. so that's the reason like you know keep yourself uh, active attentive and uh, have your thinking cap on uh, throughout the discussion so just to share you uh, the the basics uh, you know of an interview that how it starts is that it starts always with an open position in any organization where hiring manager raises a request, HR approves and CEO approves, and then it reaches to TA bucket, which is nothing but talent acquisition team. Then TA team that engage with the hiring manager, they understand like you know what are the good to have, must have criteria for that particular position. 
they decide that who is who is going to take first interview second interview final interview and all and what are the desired rating what are the different competencies all and in this case probably like you know some of the uh, techniques also can be used uh, probably uh, which can be called it as a competency behavioral a competency based interview or behavioral event interviews uh, cbi and bi which are the most common thing you know so that you can decide that like whether you are going to uh, include that yes or no as a team then it goes to ta team uh, uh, shortlisting so they shortlist the candidate uh, post having a first round of a call with them and then they share the shortlisted resume to the hiring manager the next step to that hiring manager shortlist the resume and request for interview schedule uh, and then ta team facilitate the interview schedule uh, uh, so that uh, they can call the candidate and have the interviews uh, that way then the next uh, to that is that now here is that uh, our our subject starts is that post all the interview round clearance candidate get selection and receive offer letter and join the company so so that's how like you know the whole process is been summarized in a minute so that you can understand the uh, you know the complete process uh, that of the interview the next slide so while we were sharing uh, uh, the content and while we were discussing with the content along with an core hr ir group we got to know that like you know the people who have asked various questions so we actually included that questions and uh, you know somebody asked the question that what is the cost of bad hire or what is the cost of wrong hire which is there and that's what we want to share an information here is that 41% of, of the companies believe that the cost hire uh, you know uh, comprises of around 25000 us dollar while 25% of uh, companies put forward that some 50000 uh, us dollar so basically uh, you know the cost of a bad hire or a wrong hire goes up to the uh, eight times of a ctc uh, in general uh, you know it's 8.33% of a ctc which generally any any recruiter or any any ta team takes as a cost to hire uh, you know um, as as a professional fees but here what it goes is that if you have if you are not hired a right person probably you have to repay as a eight times of a ctc the second thing which we want to share with all of you today is that interview is a two way street while you evaluate the candidate candidate is also evaluating you uh, you know so you are having only one candidate in front of you but candidate is having four person in front of them to evaluate and judge the organization so be it a recruiter who has given the first call be it an hr manager who has done a negotiation be it a hiring manager who has done a first round of an interview be it an hod who has done a final round of an interview or maybe sometimes ceo also even from the admin guy even from the receptionist even from like uh, you know any of the security guard also so they actually uh, they are evaluating the organization uh, basis on their own uh, perception so that's what like you know interview is always a two way street so we always keep ourselves uh, ready and informative that this is going to be a two way thing for uh, even the candidate also the next slide you see so these are this is the most important and significant uh, you know uh, part of this particular section which includes of the homework ground work and team work so basically how an interviewer can understand that you know that uh, what activity i need to do or what type of uh, like you know role which i need vivek sorry to interrupt your voice is breaking okay. so that's what we divided it into three parts homework work uh, next slide vivek uh, could we please go through this slide again okay. your voice was breaking is it audible now just a sec is it okay now yes it's audible now thank you audible oh. Okay, sure. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, can we move on to the next slide? Okay, sorry, you missed out uh, this slide. So, let me tell you that uh, you know uh, this slide consists of the most important part of this section, which includes of uh, homework, groundwork, and teamwork. So, the, the different type of an activity which an interviewer need to do. So, please, uh, can we move on to the next one? Yeah. so this is uh, like you know the homework basically uh, is divided into three different part is that like you know the hiring manager should know that what type of key behavior and competencies is needed for that particular position then we are having a rating scale uh, you know which is uh, specific to the organization and to the different competencies uh, then the most important thing for a hiring manager to know is that what behavior 
or knowledge might be missing from this team so that when i'm taking the new person i can have this team like uh, you know complete and i can have that uh, uh, knowledge gap or maybe that behavioral gap can be can be com uh, completed by while, while hiring this particular person what what you are willing to offer to new incumbent because you know when you are trying to get uh, all the things together probably uh, understand that what type of support you are willing to offer i mean is it some training or is it some skill upgradation or is it some certification and that actually gives you as a interviewer uh, a leverage that like you know some of the things which you probably need to you know uh, wave off also then what are the primary business problem you are facing recruiter are the most important thing is that like you know what are the five must to have and uh, three good to have uh, attributes uh, in a respective incumbents urgency of a position to close and then the various fun fundamental and functional criteria which is associated hr manager uh, should know that uh, uh, which are the uh, vivek your voice is breaking again or uh vivek uh, are you able to hear me vivek we are unable to hear you clearly your voice is breaking Yeah, Vivek. Um, I would suggest if we can please go it's through this slide again. Yeah, please go through this slide again. Yes, it's audible now. Vivek, are you there? Vivek, we are unable to hear you. Are you there? Yes, Vivek, are you there? I'm extremely sorry. It seems there's a technical issue. We are trying to fix it. Please allow us a minute. Yes, uh, Vivek, are you there? Okay, Vivek, we are able to hear you now. Um, since you know we had lost yeah. you in between, yeah, yeah. I would request you if you could please take the audience through this slide again. Sure. Thank you. Sure. Thank you, thank you. So uh, yeah, so just uh, to take you the information once again on the homework is basically like you know how an interviewer can set up the process. So basically, hiring manager should know that what type of behavior and the competencies required for that particular position. What type of rating, which is uh, very organization specific, like you know IT companies are having their own acceptable rating, and whereas the banking companies are having different one, uh, you know compared to the manufacturing or an automobile. So you should be knowing that what type of acceptable rating you are, uh, you know, actually putting it forward for that particular competencies, and uh, what type of behavior and knowledge which is missing from your team. So the idea is that while you recruit the person. you can actually like uh, you can you can uh, you can actually like uh, you know understand 
that probably in case of anything which is missing can be put forward while taking the new person on the board so that's the reason you as a hiring manager you should know that what type of knowledge is missing uh, what support uh, you are willing to offer to the new incumbent like what type of training what type of certification what type of skill upgradation uh, kind of thing uh, and what's your primary business problem which you need uh, this new hire to resolve so for example if you are going for a robotics uh, probably or, or or automation or uh, uh, artificial intelligence uh, kind of thing you may be looking forward that somebody coming from that competency background as a recruiter the most important thing as a groundwork for a recruiter is that uh, to understand that uh, what are the five uh, must have and uh, good to have attributes for that particular incumbent the urgency of a position which says that uh, you know what type of uh, what's the timeline basically we are having available uh to to take this candidate on board and there is always always an urgency uh you know uh, for a position closure so that's what we mentioned that, that like except as on yesterday so understand the timeline then uh, we need to the recruit as a recruiter you need to understand that what are the fundamental what are the functional criteria which is associated with role uh, for evaluation as an hr manager the most important thing which you should be knowing is that uh, what are the three major core competencies as per your organization because if your organization is a fast growing organization or a fortune 500 company or a or a you know different sector company you need to understand that what are the more uh, you know the best core competencies which is there which you are evaluating with this particular incumbent then the decision matrix and uh, behavioral uh, competencies to evaluate the motivational parameter which is associated for example if you are hiring for a sales position you should be knowing that what type of an incentive you are going to offer what type of variable pay we are going to offer as an organization and the bonus uh, so that uh, helps a candidate to take the organization on a bigger picture and understand like uh, you know as a future employer clarity on budget and notice period to buy out options and all yeah so jyoti you can move to the next one yeah uh again like you know few more things on that so you should be knowing that what type of rating is scale so i have given you the example the interview dossier so there are various combinations which is there uh, you know in terms of interview dossier so it's like a package uh, which we as a people who are doing an hiring manager needs to aware about which includes of job description which includes of engagement call brief on the resume as well interview evaluation form blank paper for notes and reference uh, you know question the most important thing which we should be looking forward here is the debrief meeting like you know where uh, it is suggested that uh, interview panel should meet once uh, prior to the interview so that uh, you know interview panel can first of all uh, distribute their own role they need to understand that what type of questions they are going to ask what is what will be the sequence of question and uh, the mutual agreement on possible hire in case if there is uh, uh, an uh, you know uh, they are not reaching out to the decision part then they need to distribute the inter- individual evaluation form so they shouldn't be using one single uh, form for all uh, the interviews uh, you know they should have an individual uh, evaluation form uh, to avoid any biasness and all resources in place uh, which are the most evident uh, you know while having an interview yeah jyoti so we can move to the next one so ground work is something which is a very basic and uh, you know this is something which is a guideline which we have covered in the next slide also as well as future uh, you know uh, content as well where it mentioned that like you know you being an interviewer always uh, uh, to be on time and start on time uh, be prepared uh, with a question to ask you know you should be reading the resume before the interview so that like you know it should not look forward uh, to the candidate that like you know you are not prepared then uh, you you should be calm and you should actually be polite smiling to start the communication with bit of warm i think this is the most common thing which happens so i am not going in detail here uh, because there is another uh, section which is the most important section coming through uh, you know so i mean i want to uh, give a more emphasis to that particular part so you know given an opportunity to ask the candidate uh, the queries and all that benefits involved in the position that you should be aware about and discussion on the next step uh, parallel you will be taking a notes as well yeah the next one so this is again the most important part is uh, team work because you know all the hiring manager needs to be aligned and they need to actually reach out to, to one particular uh, you know candidate uh, to complete the whole process so that's what the important part is that they should be uh, having an unbiased discussion 
uh, on all the candidates. There shouldn't be anything like, you know, which uh, can be getting in favor uh, with any particular candidate. Each panel member uh, should share the first uh, preferred candidate along with the reason. And then the final interview question is distributed so that, uh, you know, with an interview format and all. Thing which has to avoid is basically a myopic evaluation. The most important part is that don't look for a short term. Don't look that like, you know, you are hiring for a particular uh, person replacement. Rather, you should be looking forward that you are hiring for a positions replacement. So person may get changed, but position remains same. So that the reason the most important part is you have to look forward as a position perspective. And the, the most important, uh, you know, uh, thing during final interview is that having a deep dive hiring discussion, which includes of like, you know, maybe you can give one assignment to the person who is uh, coming for a final interview or, you know, and the same assignment to all the three people so that you can be able to evaluate that who are the right uh, person for that. Uh, the next one, Jyoti. So uh, this is the important uh, point is that we have to discuss all the candidates one by one. Uh, round robin method, you should either take like, you know, an alphabetical way or a round robin method. Avoid idiosyncratic uh, rating, like, you know, that whatever is my uh, uh, rating or my purview on the rating that you should avoid, but rather you should be looking for an organizational perspective. Even opinion masquerading uh, personal bias is that like, you know, I didn't like this. I, I was not rightly liking like, you know, that he was uh, wearing some orange color shirt or something like that. Right. So this is all your personal bias, which you need to overcome because you are hiring uh, like, you know, for a, for an organization. And that's what there is always an opinion masquerading, which has to be there. This has to be avoided. And you have to select the candidate who is closely meet the criteria uh, for the job. Yeah, Jyoti. So here is uh, like, you know, one activity which uh, we are uh, doing uh, with all of you is uh, that like, you know, which one activity of homework would you like uh, to share from now onwards? So you understood uh, that like, you know, that we discussed about uh, the three type of the activities which an interviewer has to do. So now on your chat box, you have to write that what type of one activity which you will be doing as an homework or what is your takeaway as a homework uh, from the discussion what we did today you know, and uh, write your answers on the chat box. Jyoti and Veer from Core HRIA team, they are evaluating the answers. There is no right and wrong answer, but we are actually looking forward to the, the best uh, engaged person also. Yeah, so Jyoti, we can move to the section two. Sure. Yes, we're on to the next section. Okay. Yeah. So this is on the best practices. So as I mentioned in the starting is that, uh, uh, you know, we actually inculcated uh, the best practice uh, from the different domain. So the next slide. So these are the four factors which any interviewer should be ready. Like, uh, you know, candidate may ask you the question that what is in it for me? So be ready with this question. You should be knowing that what is a career graph, uh, you know, which I am going to offer with this particular candidate. Uh, what are the challenges attached with this position and your expectation from the role within 30, 60 and 90 days uh, of onboarding? So that accordingly, like, you know, you can frame your questions uh, uh, while having an interview. So these are the four factors. And guys, we are sharing a workbook to all of you. Uh, so that like, you know, if you're missing any point, you can have a detailed in that workbook also. Uh, parallelly, we have given some exercises in workbook uh, so that like, you know, you can actually uh, jot down your own answers that uh, what type of career graph you are going to offer uh, in, in the future position for your organization. So, yeah. So, Jyoti, can we move on? Sure. These are the five important questions, uh, you know, which is, uh, which is, uh, uh, very, very imperative for any level uh, while you are hiring. So you should be knowing that, uh, you know, and this, this question can be asked directly to the candidate is that what risk did you took in the last position? What sort of uh, trend do you think uh, can affect our industry? So at least one question should be there from an industry perspective. One improvement you should be asking, uh, like, you know, which can be last six months and one biggest contribution, uh, you know, which you have done in last three months 
uh, and how you actually overcome the uh, conflict with the stakeholder so this actually gives you the overall picture that how you can cover up uh, like you know the various areas which we are which we are actually including in our next slide is that like you know which are very very important areas and we should not be missing out any particular area and uh, to identify the right candidate the next slide so this is something which is uh, you know the sixth thing which we need to uh, fix basically uh, the three traffic lights uh, which uh, generally people get bias and they consider that uh, you know these are this is something uh, which is a myth which is uh, which is like uh, you know very common nowadays so somebody who is coming late so we don't take an interview saying that this person was casual but you need to understand that we all are uh, you know living in a vuka world which is uh, all, uh, you know uh, which is uncertain uh, and vulnerable also uncertain uh, continuous uh, con confusing and ambiguous world so that's the reason like you know i mean uh, anything can happen with anyone so that's the reason you have to always give a chance for that and uh, the most important uh, you know question which people ask and which they see is that how you see yourself in 5 year this can be avoided rather you can be asking uh, with a candidate asking that like you know what type what is the first thing which you want to achieve uh, after getting on board and you know people generally ask that what type of weakness you are having uh, you know i mean how can you define your weakness and all rather you can be asking the question in another way around is that what feedback had you received from your manager so automatically you know you are covering both the strength and weakness uh, while asking this question in a different way so people generally ask like you know just share me one word description that which color you like which animal uh, you want to be what creature uh, you know or or two movies which you have seen last or which are the two sports which are uh, which are like you know uh, interesting to you brief word description when i say when i ask a question to your boss how that person will describe and so on so forth so these type of questions can be avoided and we need to overcome from this the next slide so this is uh, the seven color of science the important point is that like you know as i mentioned that uh, when we are observing a candidate the candidate is also observing us uh, and they are also observing our body language uh, you know so any negative body language can be avoided uh, you know and then we have given some uh, different examples here so when you are sitting leg cross it is showing that you are uncomfortable automatically the candidate actually like you know loses out their interest while answering the question uh, you are drumming your fingers uh, which is like you know giving a sign of an uh, annoying uh, part of it the next one and uh, with all this uh, we have given like you know the negative and positive uh, signs also that how this can be avoided so rubbing hand or maybe like you know leaning back on the chair uh, you know too much smiling actually gives you the very casual approach uh, uh, you know as a hiring manager also so uh, just have an understanding that somebody is watching you so be very cautious on that line the next one and uh, you know sometime uh, uh, pointing feet towards the uh, door or leaning in that direction or uh, maybe leaning back on the chair uh, placing your hand uh, kind of thing so these are the various uh, signals which is there uh, which one uh, can avoid and just now it's a time for you to think over and uh, just uh, you know write on a chat box that which one body language you should be avoiding going forward uh, like uh, you know as an interviewer to so the next slide yeah so this is this is the question for you is that which uh, one sign of silence would you like to stop or cautious from now onwards so maybe you can think for a 30 seconds uh, you know as an interviewer or as a hiring manager that when you did an interview what type of an uh, gesture or what type of body language you have uh, you have actually you know exhibited and uh, probably this can be avoided so while you uh, actually look forward uh, like you know as an interviewer uh, evaluating the candidate but uh, parallelly the candidate is also evaluating you so write on a chat box uh, that what type of uh, things uh, you can avoid so we can move on to the third section which is a very short section uh, because you know we have put uh, some uh, few minutes for question and answers also uh, so we can uh, move to third section the next one yes baby so this is just a yeah so uh, we can move on to the next slide 
yeah so this is these are the very uh, you know most important eight areas which one person has to look forward uh, while uh, uh, taking an interview and while evaluating the candidate so you know few of the things has been covered uh, you know here and uh, you can actually look forward on those skills which is written here and apart from that you can increase further depending of your organization also or specific to the position what you are recruiting or specific to the role or the location so this can be interpersonal skills communication skills assertiveness career aspiration uh, market insight which we have already covered earlier uh, job performance kra versus achievement this also has been covered analytical ability that what type of problem you face uh, this was also one question if you remember uh, during our focus five achieve why thing uh, we covered one question out of that and team work and dynamics also Uh, was included in that. Yeah, the next one. There are certain do's and don'ts, uh, you know, which uh, we uh, inculcated again from the questions also. What we received from the recipients, and uh, you know, so and this is again like you know uh, the various more things are there on a workbook, uh, which uh, we will be sharing to every participants here. So. so maybe if you are missing out any content here you can uh, you can actually reach out back uh, or you can refer back that workbook also and in case any further detailing is required then i am available like you know uh, through my contact here coordinates and all which can be observed from core hr ir team or maybe directly from linkedin also so just to browse you through the certain major do's and don'ts is related to like you know the rating tool so you should be using the same rating tool uh, for all the candidate uh always uh, review the cre candidate credential in advance a specific role uh, outside the work is something which you should be looking forward and uh, you know how how that candidate has performed the project differently because you know i mean in any organization there are always a 10 people in a team so why should you hire that particular person from that particular team uh, you know so you can ask the question that how you have done this type of project differently from the other team members and this gives you the space for understanding the innovation or understanding that uh, kind of interpersonal skills or maybe like uh, you know what the initiative skills for that particular candidate uh, you should be have taking notes so the most important point here is that always start note with a positive uh, you know uh, comments about the candidate don't start negative because the moment you start negative you will never come to the positive and it's very tough for you uh, to get a positive comment about the candidate so that the reason i suggest uh, like you know always start with a positive there are two things attached to it one is that probably you can consider the candidate for future one second is that uh, you know you you can you uh, you can actually look forward uh, the positive aspect of that particular candidate and you can give a right feedback also to the candidate ask same question and offer same amount of time uh, share feedback uh, one day prior uh, you know next to the discussion and when we say that like you know we'll get back so we being an hr professionals or a talent acquisition professional or even the hiring manager ensure that we have given the uh you know proper feedback to the people the next one okay uh these are the something which are the dons and uh, you know i mean uh, most of the people are following that but in case if you are not following uh, i request uh, you know you to take a note of it and you can start following that uh you know so don't ask question related to one area only like you know you see that uh, probably the candidate is not able to answer right so just move on to the second subject or second area or second function or second uh, you know related topic but don't go like you know the complete deep dive kind of thing i suggest that it shouldn't be looking like an interrogation it's an interview so you know respect and uh, you know just try to Vivek, we are unable to hear you. I'm 
I mean, apologies for the network issues during the webinar. Uh, we are trying to fix it, and uh, we'll take everyone through the slide again. Apologies, we had bad network issues because of which Vivek got disconnected. He's just joining us back again. In fact, we are extremely happy to see the inputs uh, coming across in the chat window. Also, I would urge all of you to please put in your queries that we will take up during the end of the session. So in this particular slide, Vivek has listed the 10 ban. In the meanwhile, I would request all of you to please mention more things which we should avoid doing during the interviews, which are perhaps not listed out in this slide. Are you back? Yes, Vivek. We are able to hear you now. If you could please take everyone through this slide again. Surely, surely. Uh, you know, I mean, so guys, I think like, you know, this is a perfect example of uncertainty what we face today, you know, VUCA world. So even after doing all the things, sometimes like, you know, there are certain things which is not in control. Uh, I mean, majority of the things are technical. Anyways, so coming back to the last slide, uh, you know, which is uh, include of uh, basically the uh, the 10 dons uh, kind of thing which we need to avoid and uh, what i was telling you is that uh, it should not related to you know the question shouldn't be relating to only one area rather they should be related to the various areas which you have to look forward and uh, you shouldn't have too much gap from first interview to the last interview and uh, the another thing which you should avoid is that reading resume in front of me Vivek, your voice is breaking again. We are able to hear you. No, no, it's not open. Yes, please. Vivek is joining us back again.
so this is again an activity for the people here is that like you know what one act, uh, which one thing unique thing you learned today and that you can write on your chat box uh, you know, so that we can understand uh, that uh, you know probably this can be anything related to the body language sign of it or related to homework uh, you know uh, for an interview or related to as an hiring manager or a recruiter or as a as an hr professional so or maybe what uh, one like you know information you want to share in terms of an as an interviewer so you can write your uh, comments on the chat box so jyoti we can open to the question now sure great uh, so i mean we have been receiving excellent response in the chat window and lot of inputs uh, in fact lot of new ideas as well Uh, so we'll take up a couple of questions which we have got uh, during the registration and the ones that we will pick up from the chat window first question is from uh, vikram kalyanpur who wants to know more about the agile hiring methodology and how is the success measured in it okay so i think very interesting question and uh, let me thanks uh, vikram for this question uh you know primarily this is a, this is like you know which is the need of an r and where it's a combination of like uh, you know having some of this advanced uh, technique also getting into that and i suggest like you know that include the, some of the modern techniques like even like you know robotics artificial intelligence and machine learning which is getting included in that so nowadays uh, there are some assessment tool which is available uh, free of cost uh, you know on on the on uh, uh, the net also so you can take a use of that and then probably uh, jyoti is it audible yes it's audible okay uh, so you know i mean there are certain assessment tool uh, which is there maybe if you want to take a note and the participant can also take a note uh, you know there is a, a tool called uh, Uh, you know the pre screening and assessment uh, criteria for that so you know so there are certain tools and uh, uh, resources which is available and that's how you can frame your uh, you know interview process as an agile process thanks baby this second question is uh, from anisha and nikhil uh, who was the similar question which is impact of artificial intelligence and talent acquisition and how is it going to impact us in the future okay perfectly all right so the only thing is that like you know this uh, this subject is very close to my heart uh, you know talent acquisition but uh, the domain is not today uh, for talent acquisition uh, it is majorly towards an interview side uh, but however like uh, you know now it is what happening is that uh, you know people are coming towards an artificial intelligence uh, as well as machine learning and internet of things getting together uh, you know combination of all that so that uh, all all the all the resumes which we are getting are from which are created where you can actually do uh, you know there is there is a there is a company like uh, higher view which actually gives you the pre recorded uh, you know uh, video interviews also uh, kind of thing so this is a combination of that so we uh, the recruitment industry just started getting into artificial intelligence as well as uh, you know machine learning part of it but yes i think going forward that's an idea and that's a future where the big data is also coming in a picture and this is actually giving you the pattern analysis uh, while doing an hiring also which includes of uh, you know predictive analysis also uh, 
you know that how much uh, you can ascertain with that sap success factor which is already there in place uh, has got a tool which is a combination for all uh, end to end hiring uh, which is combination of the various modules which is rcm which is a recruitment management rmk is a marketing tool uh, you know marketing and branding and then it uh, follows with an onboarding also so you know so that's how like you know the tools which is available and that's how uh, while as we uh, move forward will definitely have some more artificial intelligence and uh, machine learning uh, you know coming forward for a talent acquisition also thanks for waking up in this answer you had listed out certain tools if you could kindly repeat them again okay so uh, you know guys first of all like you know this is not an uh, you know so there is no advocacy or there is no promotion for any particular tool here but though these tools are freely available and i particularly use that and i got some advantage of it so that the reason i want you also to take a note of it and then probably you can use it uh, the first thing is that like uh, you know the tool which is available is centraltest.com this is an assessment uh, you know uh, website there you can have a few of the uh, assessment related to eq also emotional question and even intelligence question also and the various frame you know various situational based question also you can do one second is that uh, you know there is a site called crystalnose.com which integrate all your uh, your pattern uh, which you are actually putting on a social media uh, they uh, included uh, from this uh, linkedin basically uh, uh, you know and then you, you can actually get a, a complete analysis of a candidate uh, while going through crystalnose.com uh, one and even you can uh, check the compatibility also you can even check that like you know the person whom you are uh, going to give an interview what type of an answer he or she must be liking it what type of an answer you will be giving and like you know what type of because people sometimes uh, you know uh, like descriptive answer sometimes they die, they don't like a descriptive answer sometimes they like very to the point answer so crystalnose can help you understanding that interviewer uh, then the third thing which i mention is uh, related to beyond Uh, it's a social media you know i mean it's it's basically a, a company which is doing an assessment higher view is uh, like uh, you know a company which takes care of um, uh, i mean some video resumes and uh, you know video uh, uh, tracking systems also in fact uh, like you know video, video assessment basically so these are the tool which we can use uh, and for the recruiter uh, you know the important tool which is available is called socio talent Uh, where you can uh, actually get a keywords you can put a keywords and you can see that what type of uh, you know boolean or strings you can make uh, while using that uh, social talent um, as a tool so the the answer is that like you know we are actually getting into technology level and we are taking the best leap of technology now in terms of recruitment and talent acquisition and this will definitely going to give a, a very quantum leap or a very high leap in whole talent acquisition domain yeah thanks vivek also if you could uh, let us know a few online uh, psychometric tests which are cost effective okay so i am in um, though i myself is certified in uh, in uh, thomas profiling which is a disc profiling uh, you know uh, psychometric test Uh, which actually gives you the clear uh, indication about the candidate uh, coming from the various domains uh, you know and there is a i mean that's a basically called a ppa certification uh, kind of thing so i suggest uh, like uh, you know those things which is available and probably nowadays uh, people are coming uh, you know i mean uh, to create their own assessment uh, uh, customized tool so even like uh, there are there are like you know ibm is ibm connexize there which is like you know taking care of the complete assessment part of it sap success factor is again like you know getting into assessment uh, uh, part uh, somewhere like you know uh, that is also getting candidate assessment basically are the things which is there and uh, then aspiring mind is a company which is in bangalore and they are actually doing some part of assessment as well uh, then we are having like uh, you know other other few companies uh, which is there uh, but primarily i would like to uh, you know suggest that the company so while you actually select the the assessment uh, partner you need to see three things the first thing is that like you know whether that particular assessment partner has done something for your domain i mean probably i may be advocating one name here Uh, but you know if you are not from that domain uh, probably you need to you need to do a research on that so the first thing first is that see that what is their expertise and experience in that particular domain one second is that how much cost effectiveness is there and third is that like you know how much they are ready to do the customization if that's uh, that's not ready for a customization then probably like you know 
uh, the whole permutation and combination goes with the industry standard probably this may not be so helpful for you in that case so that the reason i suggest like you know be very very particular on on the assessment to a partner whom you are choosing uh, one having an exposure from your domain the second one is on the cost part of it because you know i mean there is always a budget which is associated with this particular uh, initiative and third thing is related to the customization thank yeah. you thank you um uh, another question that is from from saurabh karnik and that's something we even covered during the presentation uh, but he would want some more details in terms of how to manage your own preconceived perceptions or biases during the interview process okay i think a wonderful question and uh, that's what like uh, you know we we covered that you know, that first when you do an analysis you know the very simple thing is that what you can do is that just go to the five last interviews what you have done and, and this is a very helpful uh, thing which we suggested various hiring manager in our organization and uh, this actually helped out uh, them you know while coming out from a preconceived notion so for example you know somebody was saying that uh, uh, if i will hire only if the person is having some uh, you know these three combinations and what in case if these three combinations are not available uh, you know so i mean just to just to give you like uh, you know hiring manager perspective is that they want like uh, you know i mean beauty of an uh, uh, bollywood actress and uh, body of like you know again the bollywood actor you know combination of those two in one body which is which is absolutely i think next to impossible right so you as a hiring manager need to discuss or uh, you need to come forward that what thing most matters most for you is it uh, like you know the beauty or is it the body so i mean just to give the notions here and put a disclaimer that there is no advocacy to anything here but yes uh, you know you need to understand that what skills you are hiring and where you are having a, you know the reason or or the space uh, to do little bit of uh, of uh, you know compromise part of it say either like you know i mean if you are having some of in-house capability to do the training or to do like you know some certification or you think that like uh, you know your team is already having this type of an uh, inputs there and you don't want further more uh, kind of thing so there is a some space which you can leave away upon and uh, that's how you come to the conclusion and that's how you actually avoid a preconceived uh, notion related to the interview so i suggest uh, to the gentleman who has put the question here is that please uh, Uh, go through your last five interview evaluation and see that like you know on what basis you rejected and whether that rejection was either a must to have or good to have if it is a must to have then there is an uh, uh, some course correction which can be done during assessment and if it is good to have then probably you can take a call uh, you know uh, to the next interview okay thanks in fact a similar question that has come up from rashmi manchar amani um, who wants to understand uh, you know as recruiters we have expertise and we have gut feelings and we can easily gauge if the candidate is a right fit or not how much should we depend upon the gut feelings and to what extent should we go by the data in uh, uh, your analytics that's presented during the interview yeah so see gut feeling is uh, basically something which is a personal bias and i suggest you should avoid that you know i mean the reason being is that like you know this is very spontaneous and situational sometime you know i mean if uh, the pe- person is say i mean uh, again uh, since because you know i started my career as a recruiter and i know the abc on that so you know if the candidate is traveling outside not able to answer you properly or asking two three times the same question maybe we may sometime consider it like you know as a casual approach or we may consider that like, like you know this person is not interested or not ready kind of thing and all you know or simply like you know i mean uh, uh, dragging the questions too much and that way so don't at all go with the gut feeling uh, go with the, like you know the data that is most important go with the accomplishment go with an achievement what that person actually did in the past because uh, you know i mean you are actually recruiting for a position not a person as i mentioned in a, a earlier discussion is that the person may get changed but position remains same so that the reason you should always look forward to have a position in place in your uh, in your uh, you know i mean uh, mind while recruiting because uh, you know if it's a person specific this may be today tomorrow it may not so that the reason i suggest that always have a position specific assessment uh, for all your candidates
Thank you. Well, there's a similar question in that case, since we stated that we should go by the data received during the interview. In a lot of uh, organizations wherein we have competency-based interview models, candidates are already aware of the format and they are, they are really prepared with the answers. So in such scenarios, how do we get the best out of them? That's a question yeah. that has come up from Kavita. Right. So, Kavita, thanks for this question. Uh, you know, I actually wanted to cover uh, competency-based interview and behavioral event interview also in this session, but I think, like you know, due to some time constraint, we were not able to cover it. Uh, probably, maybe in next session when we can plan further, we can have that. Uh, just to give you the answer to the question is that uh, you know, while uh, the things are very common, so while the things are very like you know, I mean, thanks to Google that anyone is having access to anything. You know, everyone understand that what is the flow of the question. Everyone understand that what type of an answer, you know, a hiring manager is expecting and all that. And tomorrow, once uh, this uh, session will be live on YouTube, uh, probably like, you know, people can take a clue from this also that, like, you know, what as an interviewer, uh, you know, you are expecting the answer as well. But however, the situation is Vivek, sorry, your voice is breaking again. Different every second. Uh, is it audible? Yes, it's audible now. We lost you a bit in between. If you could just repeat that. Okay, I'm saying uh, what I said uh, to Kavita is that, uh, you know, uh, the most important uh, part which uh, we have uh, to look forward is that don't go only with the past achievements. You have to give some situational question where that person needs to come out uh, something unique and something uh, you know which that person has never experienced, uh, and that can be only possible once you actually give a case study. So the best part is that you can actually give a case study where you are having a confusion related to the accomplishment. So ask uh, the candidate to give an accomplishment, and when the person gives an accomplishment, uh, you know just try to flip the question back, saying that like you know how you can uh, you know take up the situations. If the if the parameters has got change, right? So give a present uh, uh, case study, and then you will be having a better chances to evaluate that candidate in a better manner. Great, thank you. And Vivek, one more question, since you know we are talking about a related topic, uh, which is the interviews. So Kavita Anand, she wants to know: Is being diplomatic in certain cases the right choice for candidates? And how should the interviewers rate the candidates who are being honest or candidates who are being diplomatic in providing the answers? OK, so uh, the evaluation as an interviewer is most important thing. And uh, what you have to do is that you have to uh, not look to only one aspect. As I mentioned that, like, you know, the question shouldn't be only from one area. The same way you shouldn't be having an like, you know, the answers uh, expectation from the one area kind of thing so rather you should be evaluating the candidate from the various uh, types and means one is that uh, you know relate giving some of the situational question related to the present also as well as past and something which is in anticipation in future being diplomatic uh, to the candidate uh, is not advisable because they are also like you know uh, i mean the human being and while you are judging the candidate, the candidate is also judging and you never know that tomorrow that candidate may be your future customer or maybe your future uh, employer as well, or maybe like, uh, you know, or, or a future vendor also, you never know, you know, so that, that's the reason, uh, you know, I would not suggest uh, personally my view uh, to being diplomatic as an interviewer also or as a candidate also, because what happened, even if you are a diplomatic as a candidate, uh, you know, you are actually creating a hypocrisy and the person who are taking your interview as a panel they actually pass that situation some five year or a ten year uh, uh, you know uh, previous to you so they understand coming from and, and uh, they can figure the reason like you know i suggest that you know i mean diplomacy can be your voice was breaking again Also, oh, sorry. Okay, I think there is. Uh, the last is it part audible? of the answer? Is that uh, you know? I mean, uh, being diplomatic need to be avoided. Either it can be an interviewer or it can be candidate. Okay, thank you. 
Moving yeah. on to our next question from Dr. Nandesh uh, Harimat. Uh, he mm -hmm. wants to know how critical is clarity in the job description? And what are the questions that one should uh, particularly ask from the hiring managers to seek best inputs and best details, which further help us in sourcing for the profiles? So this is a typical, uh, I mean, you know, the question coming from a talent acquisition domain, uh, a recruitment domain. So uh, the most important thing are four factors. Uh, Dr. Hiramath, if you can take a note here, uh, you know, I mean, I suggest you that divide your whole discussion into four parts. You know, have some of the things which is functional part, uh, sorry, fundamental, start always with a fundamental, is something where you can actually get an answer uh, within a word or within a bracket. For example, what can be the age uh, bracket you are looking forward for this particular position? That is one. Second is that like, uh, you know, I mean, what, what sort of the things which is uh, preferable for you, qualification and all that, which can be answered in uh, one particular uh, word. That we call it as a... Uh, fundamental uh, parameter then it goes to functional so understand uh, two three things uh, on the functional part and then it goes to behavioral you know that if it's a middle level management position that what type of behavioral attitude we are looking for what, what type of skills we are looking for what, what type of uh, you know uh, knowledge uh, base we are looking for and all those things and parallelly what type of motivation this organization can give to the candidate see we always uh, do one thing is that we always evaluate the candidate but we never evaluate ourselves as an organization. So this uh, create always a threshold in between is that how you can evaluate uh, yourself as an organization. And this uh, can give you the better leeway to, to uh, hire the right candidate. And the most important part uh, which any recruiter should be asking uh, to the hiring manager is, uh, you know, must to have and good to have things uh, like, you know, maybe five must to have is most important thing that can uh, do away any of your rejections. And three, good to have. This can actually push and propel your candidate for that particular position. Great. Thanks, Vivek. And one question which has come up from a lot of our audience. What are the topmost attributes to, to look for in candidates? Okay. So very simple uh, thing which I learned uh, some 14 years back, uh, you know, while having and starting of my career, is that while you evaluate the candidate or judge the candidate, don't look for only one thing, you know, because you will be personally biased and then you will not be able to, you know, get a rock star for your uh, company because, you know, as a recruiter or as a talent acquisition professional or as an HR professional, the focus is that to, to get a rock star for your company, not lesser than that, right? So you should be always looking forward on the, the first and most important part is the attitude, which includes of like, you know, the learning attitude, learning curve and what that person has performed in past uh, in terms of an attitude part of it then it goes to skills that like you know that what type of skills am i looking for forward while hiring this particular position and whether this person is bringing that skills forward if that skill is uh, you know not having uh, uh, the relevance for that particular position then i shouldn't be looking forward even that uh, and then the the knowledge so basically uh, the three things which we can put forward is always called ask that is called ask so A for attitude, S for skills, and K for knowledge. So whenever you are uh, hiring, you should always focus that these are the three asks for me, or these are the three imperatives for me, uh, you know, for this particular position. All right. Thank you, Vivek. And uh, one last question from um, Rajiv uh, Velur, who wants to know more examples on the interview evaluation formats that you had discussed during uh, the presentation. Okay, so see, uh, interview evaluation format, uh, you know, there are various uh, different type of formats which is available. So either it can be an objective or it can be subjective or it can be collaborative. So uh, generally what happens, people goes with an objective part, you know, because they want to give the rating. So for example, the communication skills. So as an interviewer, uh, people wants to give a rating that, uh, you know, out of uh, 10, 10 being the highest and one being the lowest, how much, uh, you know, uh, can be communication skills. But the most important part here is that, first of all, all the hiring manager or an HR professional or like, you know, the people, the complete interview value chain. Let me call it as an interview value chain because, uh, you know, all the people are giving their values to that. And uh, the, the whole chain is very important. Right from recruiter to the hiring manager, to the HOD and to the HR and uh, to the business head or a CEO. So this is called as an interview value chain. 
and uh, one need to be very clear that what type of communication i'm uh, i'm looking for in this candidate it should never happen that recruiter is looking for a best communication skills and uh, you know i mean uh, uh, hod is is ready to compromise on that so that's the reason uh, you know i suggest that first the alignment is very important to the complete interview value chain once the alignment is there then you decide that like you know what type of format you want to do it for your uh, your organization whether it can be you know an objective one you know where you will be giving a single rating to that or you will be giving a subjective one so and uh, or or maybe a collaborative one which can having a both which includes of objective also and subjective also if you take my view or a best practice i suggest that it should have a combination of all three in fact a collaborative one the reason being like you know i mean the whatever you are actually putting a, a reasons uh, to uh, the uh, parameters which is an objective parameter in subjective parameter this can be clearly uh, visible that whatever you are giving the ratings uh, during objective part of it subjective it is coming out in in terms of in a more explanatory way so the combination is uh, is both uh, you know objective as well as subjective uh, while you actually design your interview evaluation format so i Please suggest like you know yeah sorry so so this is this is something like you know which can be combination and which can be which can be practiced across Great. I hope it answers. Yes, it does. In fact, one more, one last question we'll <laughs> we'll pick up. We've sure. been getting a lot of queries. Um, yeah. How do we source better? Roma Butt wants to know how do we source better for the niche skills within the budget? While we understand it depends from profile to profile, uh, but if you could suggest what is the right methodology to follow, and if there are any unexplored channels that you think we should look at when it comes to hiring for niche profiles. okay so i think people are more interested to a talent acquisition so i request jyoti and veer to have one more session on talent acquisition <laughs> completely on this so that we can actually you know uh, take more and more questions on talent acquisition part of it also so however just to answer the question is there always you know and a scope of improvement and a scope of uh, learning uh, everywhere so just to give you the idea is that like you know i mean uh, as i mentioned that uh, uh, probably you can start using some more uh, tools uh, as i mentioned socio talent so socio talent is something where you can uh, get uh, like you know your booleans uh, in place and uh, you can have the strings uh, ready which can help you in terms of doing a google sourcing also even in terms of doing a boolean search also which you can use even the portal also like you know linkedin or nokri.com or a monster or times anywhere wherever you need a keywords uh, boolean strings and all so socio talent can help you like you know creating your own strings on that that's one second is that the pre uh, you know assessment uh, uh, tools which are available so you can actually give the questions to the candidate having an evaluation that and answer those questions in the resume so while you you can ask that uh, candidate to like uh, give the answers from those subject which is must to have because you know hiring for a niche skills i know that it's always uh, i mean you know Uh, a very 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 tough task so uh, what you have to do is that first of all plan your strategy and you shouldn't uh, be looking forward as a general traditional way rather you should look forward that what can be the innovative way what i can do forward for this particular position to hire and in that case like you know what type of tools which is available and start with the socio talent start with crystal lows and all that and parallelly you can actually start getting on to the google search you can actually go to the images search right now and even the job robos also i mean surprised to the fact there is a company in china and japan uh, who are who are actually using the robos for like you know i mean cv screening as well and uh, even the volkswagen company uh, you know in um, they they in in one auto expo they have done the whole interview without uh, any hr professional or without any ta professional you know so it was actually an interview in a car and uh, i mean this is very open and this is this uh, link can be shared you know uh on 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 a youtube as well you know that uh, the car has took the complete interview so while while taking that ai and uh, you know machine learning in place so yes there is there is always a chances of exploration in terms of answering a question on terms of a budget constraint yes there is always a budget constraint because the expectation is always high in terms of a hiring manager perspective and the organizational perspective however what you can do as a as a recruiter or as a sourcer or a talent acquisition professional is that look forward to the minus one companies to from the same industry you will come to know that yes there is a company which is there and for this you can use the linkedin uh, you know uh, 
insights which is there where you can see that uh, the companies from where the candidate is coming from and where the company is the candidate go so this way it is very clear and evident that uh, like you know you are actually creating a more and more uh, mapping uh, targets for yourself and once the mapping target is there you can see that like you know which are the companies where you are uh, you know getting a complete budget controlled candidate or or within the budget candidate so that is one and the, the most important point which i want to tell you here is that don't ever look forward to have a 100% match in the candidate either as a recruiter or as an hr professional or as an interviewer because if that 100% match is there then either you will not be able to sustain that resource for a long time because that person will not be able to like you know get a value addition uh, kind of thing feeling for monotonous and all and second is that like uh, you know you you want to be able to give a value addition to the role also or it's very tough even for you to identify because you know none of our 10 fingers are same so how you can get a even two candidate as a same one right so always look for 60 to 70% match this is a good match uh, for any industry standard because this gives you the space for a for a training also this gives you the space for a person to give you the stable uh, you know career graph also career aspiration also so that's the reason even if say, somebody coming from 70 60 to 70% match and even up to the 80% match you are actually getting a right fit okay great uh, thanks vivek uh, you know while we are closing just one last question which has come up from everyone i promise this will be the last one um, okay so what we really want to understand is one um, you know what are the ideal ratios that we should consider hiring ratios that we should consider uh, when it comes to offer to join or when it comes to you know offer to hire ratios also a lot of us face challenges in terms of offer dropouts or you know candidates accepting offers and then job hopping so how is it that we can handle and also the third part of the question would be uh, what are the best recruiting channels that we should look at specifically uh, you know in terms of employer referral what what would be the right percentage for each channel that we should look at i think a very disruptive question so if i miss out any part uh, I'll repeat it. I'll repeat. <laughs> yeah yeah pardon me and and maybe just just like you know repeat it again so let me start from the first part is that uh, you know uh, just just repeat the first part please so sure. the first part um, is that uh, you know what are the ideal ratios hiring ratios that one should yeah, yeah, yeah. got it got it got it so you know i mean i actually give a practical example and this is something which i learned while uh, doing some of like uh, you know doing a value stream mapping or a kaizen uh, for a talent acquisition uh, space so ideal ratio what we look forward is 1 is to 12 you know uh, from the inception of a position to the candidate on board and there has been complete uh, you know a matrix which has been defined because uh, you will get a 50% back out either during the interviews or during the like you know considering all those ratios put together uh, you know so we what we understand is that you should at least have some 10 to 12 candidates in your pipeline for any particular position and just share first uh, set of the resume which are the five resume to the hiring manager the idea is that you can understand uh, that like you know whether your uh, your search is going in a right direction or you need to do some of the uh, improvements in terms of your sourcing guideline uh, so that's how your first five resume goes out of that uh, once you get a short listing if it is uh, three and plus you know your search is in right and you probably can continue adding one more set which can be of three more resume if it is not right you can have a reengagement call there you can understand that like you know where uh, where we as a recruiter went wrong and where we can do further process improvements on that and uh, you can have a course correction in that so that's how like you know you can have a clear uh, uh, clarity for you uh, in in terms of going forward for that particular position so that's on set number 2 uh, set number 1 i mean uh, as i mentioned i'll brief once again is that five resume set number 2 with a three resume because again considering 50% of a probability here which actually goes uh, you know either an interview back out or a candidate back out uh, at the last minute kind of thing and uh, so now you are having uh, like you know three candidate uh, from the first set of resume and two candidate from the uh, or, uh, or at uh, three more candidate uh, you know from the second set of resume so at least five candidate are there where you can uh, feel that this person can actually go to the final round and uh, you know the ideal ratio says that you should have three candidate at a final stage so that you know in case of any offer uh, you know a uh, backout happening you can actually have another candidate as a backup and third candidate as a considering as a 30% probability of like uh, uncertainty 
probably that candidate uh, may not be able to sustain further or may get rejected a final round also so while you are having a final round interview happening you should have three candidates and this will avoid your uh, offer back out ratio also while doing this of one course correction our uh, our uh, matrix actually moved from 46% to almost 98% odd uh, you know in terms of a quality of a resume in terms of uh, hiring uh, you know within tat and third thing in terms of a customer satisfaction csat ratio so i hope that first uh, first part has been covered here yes definitely it does um the second part of the question was uh, the major challenge that we face is uh, that the offer to join ratios are comparatively lower so how to increase them how to you know build an engagement with the candidates uh, and how to ensure that um, candidates after receiving the offers are not really hopping jobs hopping for offers okay so i mean there is a hindi word called sam dam dand bhed so you know just increase everything and just include everything and like you know you will have the candidate in front of you uh, you know so i mean i'll just explain you all the four points together one is like you know very simple uh, you know i mean that was little on a lighter note but uh, you know the most important part is that how are you engaging don't consider a candidate as a candidate consider candidate as your future colleague believe me guys you will not have any offer back out you know or you will have an offer back out which is less than even even 5% or less than even 10% kind of thing because the moment you start considering a candidate as a future colleague believe me you start getting yourself as an associated one so then you know i mean nowadays with the whatsapp coming in and like you know the status getting into that and broadcast uh, list kind of thing getting into that whatsapp group and all you know you can actually figure it out that how much this person is getting engaged with you okay i personally suggest that like uh, you know i mean you can create a broadcast list where uh, you can actually see that uh, how many candidate whom you offered are are responding back to you one second is that like you know engage them as your future colleague and start getting into uh, you know their their issues that like you know what are the problem what they are facing in a present organization and all and um, always uh, follow the 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 table of 7 you know 7 14 28 and that way uh you know so so every seventh day have a connection by some or other means either this can be a tangible or this can be intangible you know i mean the the right uh, sources says that like you know advance use of technology so ask for a resignation uh, copy after some you know fourth or fifth day of an offer letter acceptance then start engaging as a future colleague maybe like you know you can start uh, sharing some inputs about your organization maybe like you know because every organization is very very uh, you know uh, volatile and very very much uh, growing so there is always something which happens in our organization on a daily basis so as a future colleague you can start uh, you know taking a respond to that particular response of that particular candidate and uh, just talk to them and understand that like you know how much that person is getting really interested on that with one or two sign you can feel that uh, you know how how the response is happening and uh, uh you know so and probably what you can do is that uh, you can actually fix up a tat turnaround time uh, for the various activities which is uh, which is there from an offer stage to onboarding stage which includes of like you know third day or fourth day you can ask for a resignation copy or uh, you can ask that within 7 days or 10 days you have to go for a medical then you can ask for one or two detail which can be included for your background verification and uh, then you can ask like you know that this is something which is my company is going through so what type of suggestion you would like to give or share some in insight that like you know we are doing this in our organization and all so with this automatically you will start getting a secondary signal uh, from the candidate that how much that person is engaged and how much that candidate is interested and uh, you know and then rest is on the god you know that you can see that probably you know i mean you you need to understand that there is always some uncertainty is which is there all the 100 people will not be joining so you should always have a plan b ready the moment you see that this type of secondary signals are coming to you from this uh, this candidate start your plan b and start getting into the second best candidate for that particular position great thanks and the last part of the questions which is related to the sourcing channels so while we understand we focus more on low cost channels but according to you what is the ideal mix of the channels and if we specifically talk about the referral channel also then what should be the percentage that we should look at okay so first on the matrix uh, you know so matrix there shouldn't be anything which we can say that uh, you know i mean uh, one size fits all uh, kind of thing so that the reason i suggest that be specific to your industry 
and let's see that like, like you know there are certain primers which comes out uh, by big four uh, you know companies also and uh, person by dolite uh, dolite sorry uh, you know so they are actually sharing various white papers there is a there is a uh, like you know site called acc uh, which is like you know uh, society of uh, american uh, you know executive professionals they are sharing certain insights uh, even uh, our uh, you know there is a site called era era.org.in where executive recruiters association is there they are also sharing some of the white papers so you can take uh, your you know uh, the cognizance of these type of white paper and the metrics which is available uh, you know for your particular industry and a domain and then accordingly you can have a complete um, you know uh, your uh, uh, hiring plan attached to that now coming to the sourcing mix yes uh, this shouldn't there shouldn't be a dependability towards one particular parameter or one particular source because it should be the mix so i suggest the best part is that uh, you know i mean go to the traditional approach also which goes with an employee referral uh, you know because in that case one is that like you know you are getting a, a you know reference uh, referred candidate one the reliability is very high the stability will be very high and you are always having a go to person to check uh, the credentials of that particular candidate so employee referral one second is that like you know the portals because you need to have a continuous inflow of the candidate coming to you so always start with a job posting you know because uh, uh, and job posting always like you know goes for a month at least so while uh, you actually uh, do the interview also every day you are getting a new candidate uh, your resume as well so you shouldn't be actually like looking forward to have any any of the sources uh, uh, on a daily basis rather you are having a combination which is coming to you the job posting plays a most important role so just post it either on like you know the free sites uh, which is there like linkedin and all uh, you know and the other portals also whatever the sources you are having available as an organization with you so you can actually take an advantage of those sources the third thing most important is uh, related to the assessment so you should uh, not have uh, like uh, you know different criteria for a different assessment first uh, jot down like you know that which are the which are the criteria for what you are going to do an assessment create your own rating scale that if i need to do the assessment uh, for an automobile company i shouldn't be having the same rating scale as an assessment for an it company or i uh, if i am doing the same thing for a junior level guy uh, assessment criteria same parameter i shouldn't be putting it forward for a middle level or a senior level because the competency differs because uh, because the responsibility differs accountability differs and that's how like you know you need to be very clear on the part what you are assessing it so the combination of sources are advisable the combination of the various mix is advisable and uh, always try doing something new don't go with like uh, you know start with the traditional as i mentioned but in the meantime always explore that you know whether whether networking can help me you know whether i can actually go to some event and i can get some of like uh, you know the candidate uh, related to my particular domain can i actually go to some of uh, you know uh, the the near go to places also where i can see these people hanging around for example if you are recruiting for an hrd uh, sorry uh, hr professional an hrd is the best place where you can go for yeah or maybe talent acquisition professional you can actually go to some of the sourcing forums also so if you are actually hiring for an engineers you know there are various uh, you know uh, events which is happening only for the engineers there you can go marcom marketing communication professional uh, can be observed in any of the event which is being organized for that particular you know uh, industry specific kind of thing so the answer to this third part of a question is that like you know combination of a sources combination of a mix and uh, you know i mean combination of an assessment criteria plays an important role while you are hiring a right fit absolutely great um, thank you so much vivek um, with this uh, we come to an end of this session in fact um, it's been one of our most interactive uh, session which is our audience has been really active we've got a lot of inputs from them we've got a lot of questions from them uh, while we haven't been able to take up all the questions in case anyone has any specific queries you could always reach out to the core hr team or you could connect with vivek directly also this is the responses that we have received today we have our top 3 most engaged uh, audiences and i'll be announcing their names um, uh, and uh, we have dr nandesh hiramat rajiv velur and parul chatterjee so we wait for wow. the surprise something in store for all three of you so yeah
so i think uh, really congratulations to three of you and thanks to jyoti and veer i know that like you know coming to conclusion is not so easy and uh, reaching out like you know i mean uh, it's like you know at a speed of thoughts you guys must be calculating uh, the engagement level so hats off to to the core hri team also while uh, coming up uh, with this particular conclusion in no time right and the surprise what i'm having here uh, for all the people who are here is that uh, you know 300 participants or whatsoever like you know we have received the responses we will be giving free of cost uh, you know uh, workbook uh, post this webinar to all of you and you can uh, and now the another surprise is that you know you need to answer the question which is given in the workbook and you need to send it back to to core hrir team you know and finally it will come to us and then we will be evaluating two more participants uh, you know uh, who are uh, whose answers are most unique in nature relevant and uh, can be taken forward as a best practice so so this is the criteria for the rest of the two people you know and uh, the fastest answer yes like you know who uh, what comes first kind of thing so we will be having this uh, award also which we will be announcing in the next uh, webinar uh, session where we will be like uh, you know announcing the award for a uh two people who are actually uh, able to give a, a most interesting answer to the question given in the workbook and most relevant and most fastest uh, answer uh, from those questions you know so the question are there in a workbook which will be shared with all of you and the answer will be given uh, you know i mean i mean the name of the winners will be announced in the next webinar and three people who have uh, got uh, like you know the name most engaged today uh, and even the next three people uh, uh, two people in fact so five people will be getting my book uh, authored by me uh, you know uh, completely signed by me to the correspondence address to you so this is a small gesture which we are extending to all of you uh, today uh, to sparing out a time on 14th on baisakhi on ambedkar jayanti on 14 which is a very important uh, you know day for all of us uh, being sunday a uh, family day for all of us but you know you guys are really wonderful and uh, sparing out a time for that so that's as a small token of gesture we are giving this uh, free away to you and uh, this uh, free people uh, like uh, you know dr hiramat and parul and i think i missed out the second and rajiv pardon me come again rajiv 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 velur okay so rajiv parul and uh, dr hiramat uh, many congratulations to uh, three of you uh, you know and you will be getting my book uh, to uh, at your correspondence address uh, you know and uh, i will be like you know and two more name will be announced in next webinar uh, who will be the most uh, you know fastest and realistic in terms of answering uh, the question from the workbook so i think uh, with this absolutely you know i mean we are very very happy to have all of you here today and i am open uh, for any further question or any further connection on linkedin so you can connect with me freely though i have got my quota exhausted in terms of connection but yes uh, through through like uh, you know uh, direct messages also you can reach out to me my contact number and email id is very clearly visible on linkedin so jyoti over to you thank you very much for a fantastic and most engaging session so it was amazing having you here and you know golden opportunity for all of us to learn and we'll definitely look forward to more such sessions in future also you know core hr team with its vision to move on one by one towards achieving a, a great learning opportunity for everyone uh, is committed to these ongoing learning webinars as well as you know a feather in the cap was our first leadership development program which happened in bangalore when we had four eminent speakers who shared their insights with 45 plus hr professionals from various industries so we will continue to work on all of these efforts and you know the more we achieve this our vision also broadens uh, in terms of increasing the learning curve for everyone so thank you vivek and thank you to all the audiences who spared their time today please wait uh, for the email with the workbook from our end and we will await your responses and uh, we'll be announcing the winners in the next webinar once we wait reviews the responses so please share your feedback with regards to this session it really helps us in working more in terms of our efforts and a big thanks to Veer Bhanu, PC Katish and Anu and many more behind the scenes for the never ending support. Uh, have a great weekend and thanks once again Vivek for your time. Thank you so much. Thanks everyone.